Welcome to KW Fit. I'm Ken. Now, one of the questions I get asked a lot is, how much weight should I be lifting? Well, I'm going to discuss that next. Before we can answer that question, we need to talk a little bit about the three different types of muscle fibers that exist in your body. Now, hold on. I know a lot of you are thinking about exiting the video at this point. However, I promise I won't use terms like mitochondria, fast twitch, slow twitch muscle fibers. In fact, I'm going to attempt to oversimplify this so it's pretty easy to understand. Think of it this way. You have three athletes that live inside your body. You have an Olympic weightlifter, an interval athlete, and you can think of that athlete as a basketball player, boxer, wide receiver, and you also have a marathon runner. Now, the Olympic weightlifter prefers low reps and heavy weights. The interval athlete prefers moderate reps and moderate weights, while the marathon runner prefers high reps and low weights. Regardless of your fitness goals, you need to train all three athletes. Lifting heavy is going to improve your overall power, muscle strength, joint strength, and bone density. Now, I know some people get concerned, especially women, that if they start lifting heavy, they're going to get big, bulky muscles. Remember, you're never going to be any bigger than the amount of calories that you consume. So if you're a female eating less than 1,500 calories a day, not that I recommend counting calories, but you simply aren't intaking enough calories to generate any significant significant mass, so don't be afraid of lifting heavy. Lifting moderate weight will improve your strength, increase muscle size, which will increase your resting metabolism and provide some shape to your body, while lifting light and using higher rep ranges will create more of a cardio effect, which burns more calories and improves your endurance. Now, depending on your fitness goals, you may want to focus on one particular athlete more than the others, and you also need to take timing into account. If you're a marathon runner, you don't want to start a four-week training program focused on heavy weight training two weeks before a race. That just simply wouldn't be smart. But failure to train all three athletes will lead to plateaus and can increase your risk of repetitive injuries. So it's important to mix it up. Now, whether you're doing a program like Fit12, or if you're working with a personal trainer, or even if you're just setting up your own workouts, you'll either be given a rep range or you're going to select a rep range based on the athlete that you want to train. For example, let's say that we want to train that interval athlete. In this case, we may pick the 12 to 15 rep range for shoulder presses. This means that if you can do more than 15 reps, you're using too light of a weight. If you can't get to 12 reps, you're using too heavy of a weight. You need to find a weight that's going to cause you to reach your failure point somewhere within that 12 to 15 range. And when we say failure, we mean you can no longer perform the movement using proper form. Now, make sure you always write everything down, the amount of weight that you're using, the number of reps that you've performed. That way, you can track your overall improvement. So back to our example. If you're trying to do four rounds of a circuit workout, maybe you can do 13 reps of shoulder presses for rounds one and two, but you can only do 12 reps for round three and maybe 11 reps for round four. The next time you do the workout, you want to try to improve on rounds three and four so that you're doing the same number of reps for all four rounds rounds. Once you can perform the same number of reps for all four rounds, you can now try to increase your reps to rounds one and two, basically starting the process over again. Once you can perform all the rounds at the top of the rep range, in this case it would be 15 reps, it's time to increase the amount of weight you're using, which should bring you back down to the lower end of the range, which is 12 in this case, and then you start your way back up again. Now, after about four weeks, your body's going to start to adapt to the workout and your progress may stall. This is a good time to switch focus onto one of the other athletes and change your rep range. So, to summarize, the amount of weight that you lift will be determined by the rep range. The rep range should be determined based on the athlete that you want to train, and you need to train all three athletes. You should also change up your uh, routine about every four weeks or so, so you don't plateau. Now, at KW Fit, we have this all laid out for you as part of the Fit 1-2 program. We provide you the workout guide, you have videos that can get you active and improve your overall fitness level, whether you're a beginner or advanced. Just check us out at kwfit.com. The program's free, you don't even have to register. Now, if you like this video, you thought it was helpful, let us know, give us a thumbs up, or you can leave some comments down below. If there's other topics you want us to cover, let us know that too. We'll be more than happy to post more videos like this. A shout out to my daughter, Jordan. She's 10 years old, and she helped put together some of the artwork for me in this video, so I think she did a great job. All right, I'll see you next time.